We have become an overweight nation. With over half of the adult population and almost a third of all children overweight, we are clearly in need of a change in direction. Modern lifestyle has contributed. Lack of exercise, hectic lives and fast food that's sometimes more popular than home cooking. Throughout this series, we will be exploring key components of health and fitness by speaking to leading experts with regard to diet, exercise and simple lifestyle changes. Rosemary Conley celebrates her 40th anniversary this year, having launched her diet and fitness business in 1971. Rosemary shares with us her wealth of knowledge and expertise. Dieting is a funny word because dieting is uh, looked upon as being oh, a punitive prison sentence where you have to eat crisp spreads and, and lettuce to lose weight. Um, when in actual fact it doesn't have to be like that and in actual fact dieting should be thought of as much more to do with everyday eating. Let's eat a healthy diet, um, nothing to do with you know, thinking it's at all punitive but choosing a healthy direction. Um, my diets are based on low fat and they are based also on counting calories because calories are really like the currency of the energy value of food and the fattening power of food. My name is Gwen Cherry and I've known Rosemary nearly 40 years. I started at Rosemary's class I think about 1978 when I was quite overweight and um, I've been with Rosemary, I do cashiering for her. Um, she's really changed my life because uh, I used to be such a frightened person, you know, what, no confidence or anything. Trying to stick to a diet years ago, I mean, now it just comes natural. It, it is just a way of living and you've got, if you want to look good, you've got to feel good. You've got to have confidence in yourself and you've also got to stick to your diet. You know, nothing is better than being slim, attractive, and just being yourself. It's really important to educate our children from a young age to eat healthily, and they should be introduced to vegetables early on. And I think it's very sad when children are enticed to eat when they get a little bit picky and so they end up with their fish fingers and their chips, neither of which I would criticise in, in, as their food items in themselves, but not every day. Um, and they should be able to have you know, a boiled egg for tea or a poached eggs on toast or beans on toast or something like that and get used to all the different flavours. Uh, and that's something which you reach a certain point later on in life and you think, oh, no, I don't like that. Um, whereas if you're educated at an early age, it's much, much less of a barrier. If we get the children when they're younger, it's much, much better. In the last 20 years, sugar consumption by the average person in Britain has jumped by almost a third. We spoke to Splendor, who've developed a low-calorie alternative to sugar. The company Tate & Lyle, the sugar people, produce the sweetener sucralose, which is the sweetening ingredient in Splendor. Sucralose is made from sugar, tastes like sugar, but is not sugar. Sucralose was uh, first discovered in the UK in 1976 and Splenda was launched in the US in 2000 and in the UK in 2002. Splenda was the first brand to be made with sucralose in the low calorie sweetener category. Splenda granulated works best in recipes where the main role has a sweet flavour, so things like fruit pies, puddings, sweet sauces, glazes, cheesecakes even things like that. And I'm going to show you how to make some blueberry muffins. So first up, the important thing to remember when making muffins is you want to mix your wet ingredients in one bowl and your dry ingredients in another. I've got my oven preheated on gas mop 4 or 180 degrees C and I've also got my muffin case ready. Now it's important to get all these things ready before you start making your batter so that the batter doesn't have to wait around. So wet ingredients, four tablespoons of vegetable oil. Going in. Next wet ingredient is a teaspoon of vanilla. Now you just need one egg, so crack your egg in. This is such a quick recipe to do, especially if you've got friends coming over. Skimmed milk, so 175 mils. So just pour your milk in and we're going to mix those all together. 
before adding it to the dry ingredients. The great thing about low calorie sugar alternatives is that they don't have to change the way you eat. They can be used almost anywhere that you use sugar, so you can easily incorporate them into your existing diet without having to make any big changes. Low calorie sugar alternatives are most commonly used to sweeten hot drinks like tea or coffee, but you can also use them to sweeten cold drinks like smoothies and lemonades. Um, and there's lots of possibilities in your everyday cooking, like in, um, in cakes and in muffins, um, but also in some of your savoury dishes and even pickles. Um, you can get lots of inspirational recipe ideas from the Splendour UK website. Just because Splendour is a sugar replacement, it doesn't mean that it's not sweet. The product tastes good, so it's an easy swap to make. Too much sugar, fat, salt and cholesterol are all leading factors in premature death. But a lack of fruit and vegetables can also play a large role in the development of health problems. We spoke to California Raisins Administrative Committee about the health benefits and versatility of raisins. California Raisins are a collective of 3,500 growers and 20 or so packers. Collectively they produce around about 300,000 tonnes of raisins annually. 200,000 tonnes of that would be um, consumed domestically in the US and 100,000 tonnes will be exported. Um, the UK is the largest um, dried vine fruit market in the, wor in the world. The UK is also one of the largest importers of California raisins. What is a raisin? Uh, it's effectively a dried grape. It still amazes me how many people don't actually know that. But um, in, our, in our case, in California raisins case, it's a Thompson seedless grape, a particularly green variety. Uh, obviously, you don't see it as green when it's dried because as it dries, it, it turns brown and uh, the sugars will caramelise over a three-week period whilst it lies on the ground and is turned into a much um, darker fruit, obviously, and that's the raisin that everybody comes to uh, recognise in this country. My name is Neil Forbes, and I've got a restaurant in Edinburgh called Café St Honoré, and I'm here today to show you how versatile California raisins can be. So I'm going to show you a very quick, simple, easy, delicious, tasty dish with chicken, watercress, red peppers, Red onion has got some wonderful ingredients here, red peppers here. Of course, we'll just start the process of rubbing this in a good bit of British rapeseed oil and a good bit of salt. I'm going to roast this in the oven. So what we want to do is to remove the skin from this. So great, we're going to make the dressing now, which is very simple, very easy and absolutely delicious using these big, fat, juicy, 100% natural California raisins. We're going to make this puree, if you like, which is going to be intensified with the addition of a handful of capers, which has got that kind of salty, sweet flavour. Great as a dressing. So they're going to puree up. The benefits of eating California raisins, the first and fundamental part of that would be fibre, very high in fibre. Obviously once the moisture has gone out of the drying grape, uh, you're left with a, a wonderful moist succulent uh, raisin that's very high in fibre. What a lot of people don't realise is that uh, there are also minerals and vitamins like boron, calcium, etc. It's, it's amazing, they're pretty much an all-day fruit in the sense that uh, one of the most important eating occasions would be breakfast. Um, a lot of people tend to sprinkle them on muesli, etc. if they're not already within the muesli. Uh, lunch is another one. I use, I actually eat um, raisins myself. I uh, always sprinkle them on salads and I've always done that. I love the texture of it and I like the, the, the taste. I think it's important to get the uh, children involved. I think that's always uh, a useful benefit to get them involved in the educational side of it, to, to get them to learn why they're putting these things in. And, um, and also to, uh, to make them aware of, uh, of why they're doing it, you know, and, and to be involved in it makes them a sense of purpose. I think also, you know, sitting down as a family, I think can, can make a big difference, um, you know, improving the eating habits so everybody knows why they're eating, what they're eating. Splenda is a very versatile product. Uh, you can use it if you uh, want sweetness but without all the calories. You can use it, for example, if you're trying to lose weight as part of a balanced diet. If you drink five cups of teas of coffees per day and you would replace sugar with blender, you would save 90 calories.
You can find Splenda in two different formats, granulated and tablets. Granulated can be used almost anywhere you would use sugar. The good thing about it is that one teaspoon of uh, Splenda would equal one teaspoon of sugar, but only with 10% of the calories. And the other good thing is that you don't have to compromise on taste because it's as sweet as sugar. Uh, sweet minis are great for teas and coffees and of course are perfect on the go. Now I'm going to put my dry ingredients in a bowl. So for that I'm going to need 200 grams of plain flour. Right now I'm going to put the flour into a sieve, into the other large bowl, and to that two teaspoons of baking powder. Splenda doesn't sieve like normal sugar because sugar granules have a different composition. So it's very important to measure your, the amount of Splenda you need out first and then add it in after you've sifted the ingredients. Now this recipe we're going to use five tablespoons of Splenda and I'm just going to literally pop it all on top. So one, two, three. So simply add the wet ingredients into the dry. When you make muffins, it's really important not to overbeat it, otherwise they're going to come out like rock cakes and you don't want that. So I've got 200 grams of blueberries, just drop those all in, there we go. Now what you find when you use Splenda is sometimes, in some recipes, it can actually um, make the batter a bit dry. So all you need to do if that does happen is add a tiny bit of maybe some skimmed milk, fruit juice or water, something like that, just to make it back to the right consistency. So in recipes, the amount of Splenda can be calculated on a volume to volume basis. When you use Splenda, you'll notice it's much lighter than normal sugar. So it's not used on a weight to weight basis. So when you make your own recipes and you want to convert it into using Splenda, all you have to do is look at the conversion guide on the side of the packet to get your sweetness levels just right. You look at the calories on the back of foods, labels, nutrition labels. Personally, I think the nutrition labels are so badly designed and incredibly misleading and unhelpful to the general public who aren't, haven't got a degree, say, in trying to lose weight. Um, so I think it's, it's confusing. Um, I also think that people need to be mindful of fat because fat doesn't make you put fat on your body. But calories can be calculated from the packet and you can have a, a calorie book. I mean, we've just launched the A to Z of calories, 17,000 calorie values in there. So you will find your absolutely explicit product in there to find out how many calories it has. It's very educational. To, oh, well, I don't want to eat that one, do I? That's got three times as many calories as this one. Um, and, so, and over time, it's a bit like your shopping list. There are certain foods that you as an individual like and eat. And you soon learn which, how many calories are in those foods. What is your favourite drink? Do you eat bread or do you have pita breads? And you learn. The hardest thing is when you've had, when you've had a bad day, is even when you treat yourself, is accepting that you have to treat yourself every so often, but then getting back onto the, the diet and the exercise the next day and not thinking, oh, I've blown it. Um, go back, go and get weighed if you've had a bad week and draw a line under it and move on. And if you've had a bad day, just get up the next day and don't think, well, I had chocolate yesterday, I'll have chocolate today. Just think, well, I enjoyed the chocolate, but I'm, today I'm, I'm going back on my, my weight loss diet. After the break, we'll be hearing more top tips from our experts. You know you are my sugar. Love sugar. You then you'll love splendor. It's made from sugar. Girl, tastes like sugar. But it's not sugar. It you has just a fraction of the calories of sugar. Way. Discover sugar splendor. Because it's the little things that make a sugar big difference. And now you can enjoy all the sweetness you love wherever you are. If you love sugar, then you'll love Splendor Sweet Minis. Debbie, your nails look fantastic. What have you got on them? Oh, thanks, Andy. It's Biosculpture Gel. What's that? It's a gel that goes over your own natural nails and your toenails as well. It doesn't chip, it doesn't wear, it lasts for three weeks. It also has got a little bit of protection to your nails so my nails never break. Let me Sounds see your terrific. nail. Andy, I you need to come to the salon that I go to. Oh, I think I should. The California sunshine 
fresh mountain water and rich soils of the San Joaquin Valley combine to produce the world's favorite raisins, California raisins. 100% natural, versatile and delicious on breakfast cereals, salads, main meals, desserts and baking, or just eat them on their own. California raisins, ask for them by name, the world's favorite raisin. To try for yourself, visit our website and we'll send you a recipe book packed with great ideas. You know you are my sugar. Love sugar, you give me then your love splendor. It's made from sugar, oh, girl, tastes like sugar, but it's not sugar. sugar. It has just a fraction of the calories of sugar. sugar Discover splendor, so because it's the little things that make a big difference. And now you can enjoy all the sweetness you love wherever you are. If you love sugar, then you'll love Splendor Sweet Minis. Diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure and arthritis are just a few health problems that are linked with being overweight. Problems that are costing the NHS around half a billion pounds a year. And while high fat and sugar diets are a large part of the problem, it's also worth noting that research has shown that we are now less active than ever. Rosemary Connolly explains more. When you're trying to lose weight and get sort of more healthy, it's good to understand which foods are healthier than the ones that aren't so good. Um, so if you can cope with brown bread, it is much better for you to go for brown bread that's got grains in um, because you can have brown bread that all it is is white bread dyed. Um, so that's no, actually no better for you than having the white bread. Um, but you're not getting the nutrients from that that you would get from a, a more whole grain type of bread. And a whole grain bread would keep you feeling fuller for longer. I've been to Wayne Watchers many, many years ago and it's nothing like this. It's like a big family you know everybody helps everybody else and uh, when the girls come along to the class there's always people there and they all club together and and you get praise from them you can see the difference when they start to when they finish and you can see them bloom you know they just change and they get all the confidence that they need you know so it's a good thing if you eat too many calories you gain weight if you eat fewer calories than your body burns you lose weight. It's a matter of physics. So when people get on the scales and say, oh, I've been ever so good this week, I can't believe I've not lost weight. They have eaten too much. There is no doubt about it. There is no excuse in the world that will prevent that happening. Uh, and so it is a question of understanding portion size, understanding en energy output. So in other words, being more active. So if you eat a bit less and you do a bit more, the results are astonishing and can be very, very quick if you're very careful. We're going to make some croutons using this bread. Absolutely great. I'm going to cut it in half first. Just like this, just a nice dice. I'm going to slightly crisp these up a little bit in the oven, not too much. A little trickle of that lovely rapeseed oil again. And that's just going to go in the oven just for a few minutes, not too long. So we don't want them like bullets, we just want them just a light crispness just on the outside. Absolutely juicy, lovely, delicious, great chicken, 100% natural. So let's get this, want to hear a bit of sizzle. So that's what cooking is all about. Getting a pan on, getting it hot, you just slice this up. Reasonably thin. And again, sweetness of that red onion. Married up with that chicken. Raisins are a fantastic addition to anybody's daily diet for, for first and foremost, the taste, which obviously has to be uh, a most important thing if it's going to end up being eaten. The other thing, of course, is that with that goes a whole load of you know, health uh, attributes like fibre, as I said before, and also the other uh, vitamins and nutrients. And the fact that you know, raisins will literally accompany any type of meal at any time of the day. So just see that, just starting to blister. Get a nice strippy kind of cut on the pepper. Get the chicken, which has just been 
sitting there absolutely wonderful taking on all those beautiful flavors this is where it all happens on this plate right now this is going to be delicious we're going to scatter some of these lovely red peppers over yes it's got color it's going to attract kids they're going to be interested because it's nice and vibrant and red the whole family are going to love this our lovely pre-prepared dressing which we made of course with the wonderful big fat juicy plump california raisins that little kick of caper in there the rapeseed oil and just to finish off just because they're juicy and sweet like a few plump california raisins the crowning glory right on the top dieting is a very personal thing so what may work for one person may not work for the other but generally a healthier diet where you have a variety of foods but in balance and in moderation can mean that the diet may be more sustainable in the long run so it can help you to lose weight and keep it off. To eat more healthily it's important to reduce your intake of fat, particularly saturated fat, sugar and salt um, and an easy way to do this is to look at nutrition information and food labels and and compare similar items so that you can pick items which are lower in all of these nutrients and that can also help you to monitor how much fat, sugar and salt you're having throughout the day. It's also important to watch your portion size because even if you're eating a lower fat meal or something that's healthier, if you end up having too much of it, it can mean that you end up having too many calories which in turn can affect your weight. Um, it's not just about your diet, a healthy diet goes hand in hand with um, an active lifestyle and being physically active um, on a regular basis can help to lose weight as well as benefit your overall health. So as soon as you've mixed everything together, spoon it into your cases and this is why it's very good to be organised. Everything's ready, oven's preheated, I'm just going to pop these in for about 20 minutes. So when, when cooking with Splendor, it's important to check your baking maybe 7 to 10 minutes before the suggested cooking time, as some recipes cook a little bit quicker when using Splendor. When you're trying to lose weight or eat more healthily, it's important to make lots of small changes that you can stick to um, so that you can maintain any weight loss in the long run. So for example, if you replace sugar with a low calorie sugar alternative, it's important to remember that that is one of many other steps that you can take to um, improve your health and help you lose weight. I think persistence is probably the key thing. Uh, do you know a lot of you know small changes in your diet and your way of living, um, but you know keep keep doing it in the long run. Things like steaming food is also a very good way. So you're not using too much fat. Having things raw as well, I like. So, and also baking is good, I love barbecuing, There's, there are so many different ways that don't involve lots of fat and grease, so um, those are a few good ways. Also, you know, I think you've got to keep yourself fit, so it's not just about what you eat, it's also about how much activity you're doing. When we're not organised with what we're eating, it can lead us to end up eating um, unhealthy snacks on the go, so planning is a very important part of a healthy diet thinking ahead about the snacks that you're going to have so that you can prepare for your day and eat more healthily. People talk today many times about functional foods. Um, I would consider raisins a very functional food. To incorporate them into a normal diet, um, as I actually do myself, um, works really well and complements so many other things. I think it's important also you know, to balance that with you know, a level of fitness regime, to eat well, fitness regime, you know, etc. Would, would, would go a long way to actually, um, you know, supporting a healthier lifestyle and, and, and actually, you know, increase people's life, you know, life expectancy as well as the quality of the life that they have at the time. I think it's easier now to be healthy and have a healthy lifestyle than it has been at, in any time in the last 40 years. We have thousands of healthy low-fat foods around. We have beautiful fruits, exotic fruits, in the supermarkets every day of the year. Uh, we have the opportunity to go out and about and to exercise in all manner of ways that you couldn't have done 40 years ago. Having said that, in 40 years ago, we had to live a certain way. We perhaps didn't have a car. You probably had a twin-tub washing machine. You had to do a, lug a load of lugging about with your washing 
and uh, you didn't have, an, um, you know, you may not have had a dishwasher, you may not have had, you well, certainly wouldn't have had a microwave, and you certainly wouldn't have had a computer. Um, so those are the things that we need to compensate, the fact that we're not, we are now sitting behind a computer screen, and in those days we were doing much more, you know, communication in other ways. But it's all about choices. Um, and we have so much choice now. And yes, there's so much wasted food, which is a, a tragedy, absolutely awful. And what we should do, and I think one of the upsides of the difficult economic climate, is that we think twice about what we buy from the supermarket. And we don't get sort of embroiled in the buy one, get one three, um, and get one free even. Um, and we don't um, go and sort of, buy a whole packet of stuff because it's big and cheaper we actually are more economical and frugal we end up not throwing as much food away hopefully uh, but I think we need to be mindful of that and I also hope that the difficult economic climate will help people to do more home cooking and to be educated to eat with less fat cook with less fat buy low fat and learn how to cook low fat um, to the benefit of them and the whole of their family. Now, I know what it's like to feel overweight and not, not have any confidence in yourself, but now I bubble with confidence. You know, I just, I'm, I'm just me. This is what you get. This is me. Join us next week for some more top tips that can help you in your quest to lose weight and keep it off. <laughs>